Hello and good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining me today as I take the opportunity to give condolences to the family of Professor Arnie Burkhardt. He's a German um, professor and pathologist, and his work, in my view, was absolutely critical in terms of the pandemic. I'm unsure if he has been given enough credit for what he has done. And although I didn't know him personally, I remember in a very important interview where we were talking about mandating autopsies across the world, the pathologist that I spoke to was highlighting some of the very important research work that he had done. I cannot emphasize how important autopsy, histological examination of tissue is. Just remember that without this kind of research, everything is speculation, because that's how we determine and understand disease. So who is Professor Arnie Burkhardt? I've got here um, some information, German pathologist and research researcher, uh, University of Hamburg, uh, he was born in 1944, so he's 79 years old when he had died. And he studied in Munich. He then went on to Heidelberg in Germany, a scientific assistant. And then he was the head of the department uh, since 1991. And it seems that he retired in about 1996. And this is where I guess the, depending on which side of the fence you're on, his coming out of retirement to do autopsies on patients who had died in relation to the COVID vaccine, then caused some issues with regards to what he was saying and how he was approaching things. Now, as I said before, autopsy is the foundation of medicine and pathology is the foundation of Western medicine. So anyone who is doing that kind of work would therefore be looking to find answers for important questions around the pandemic, the infection, and the potential longer term implications with regards to COVID-19 vaccines. You have to remember that this is of interest to me because of the work that had been done earlier with SARS-CoV vaccines, just highlighting that this was from the earlier epidemic in, um, in Asia in 2003. They did try and make uh, an, a vaccine at that time, and they were unable to do it looking at the animal models because it triggered a specific kind of immune response when the animals were exposed again to the virus. So, when he did this work, the critical thing that he had done, and I'll show you this here, there's a link to this, and it's well, probably well worth going to look at this video. The video itself was done in March 2022. But at that time, he was looking at the vaccine spike protein in a person who died after vaccination against COVID-19. And they were able to reliably detect the vaccine spike proteins in the vessels of the person who died up to four months after vaccination and who had vascular lesions. The critical thing that they had been able to work out is that they used an antibody specific for the spike protein or the vaccine spike protein using immunohistochemistry uh, in the tissue sections. And they recommended that all histopathological examinations in connection with damage should be accompanied with this effect, with, uh, with this method, with immediate effect. So this was very important work that was done. It's essentially, what he had been able to do is de determine how to identify if damage to an organ was because of the spike protein from infection versus vaccination. That was huge. And so you can imagine that in that context, you then would have had people who were concerned about any question with regards to uh, the vaccine rollout or the potential issues with vaccines longer term would be very concerned about this kind of information. 
And this was exactly the case. And so you had then, this was Reuters, this was in January 2022, and they did a fact check. Yet to be peer reviewed paper is not proof that COVID vaccines cause 93% of deaths that occur after inoculation. And what they were making reference to was the fact that someone else was going to continue to do this research to try and understand, or what they were saying is that most of the deaths were related to the vaccines. Now, I think that when we think about that, I think that probably was the problem. That was an inflammatory statement. There's no need to make a statement like that. When you're looking at science, you just want the answers. And so whether or not it was the majority is kind of irrelevant when you are just trying to study what is happening. And so the minute that you put a percentage on it and it makes it sound very frightening to the public, it will immediately get shut down. And this is what the Reuters article was then saying. So then they got a number of experts. They spoke to three experts, highlighting several major issues with that research, as well as its lack of peer review. One of them um, was a professor in Edinburgh who would be surprised if the preprint passed credible review. And he thought that there wasn't enough distinction in, the, in terms of non-specialist readers being able to understand it. Another professor from the Open University raised concerns because it was only 10 cases that were analyzed. And again, they didn't discounted it. And there is certainly some truth in the fact that it's not a lot of cases. They only looked at about 10 cases. And this is then what made the headline. But you have to remember something. It's one thing to criticize the work that has been done. But if you're going to criticize it, you must therefore make sure that the work is done. So even though you may disagree with the percentages, you must therefore make sure that it's investigated. Now, this was all the way from January 2022, where people were fussing about what he found. And his research was put in a press conference in 2021. And for those who have been following me, I pointed this out that in January 2023 was the first complete autopsy that was peer reviewed and published in January 2023. So this is almost 18 months after they had raised the flag that there were concerns with regards to potential outcomes and there was no investigation. There is still not enough attention because there are only a few research studies in progress looking at autopsies. So unless you don't want to know, this is what will happen. And this was again highlighted with regards to the work that was done. At the time, we have here, this is LifeSite News Europe, and this was published in September 21, um, 21st of September 2021. And this was when they were doing the live stream presentation. It was removed off YouTube when they were discussing the adverse effects around the COVID vaccines. And you can see at that time, they had over 5,000 viewers within the first hour. There were three eminent um, pathologists. Um, so Dr. Um, Professor Burkar, Professor Lang, and Professor Bergholz as well were involved with that. And this was then taken down. And so the truth is, is that it was inconvenient because that was a time where they were trying to roll out more vaccines to the population. They were trying to overcome hesitancy. And so any kind of news like this would increase hesitancy. So I think the perspective of public health was that, listen, no matter what, this can't get out and therefore they shut it down. If you're interested in seeing exactly what the thoughts were at that time, I've put in the link below, this Twitter link, uh, and this is from, um, this was put up by Dr. John B. And at that time, this is September 20th, 2021, and you can see the three um, pathologists here, including uh, uh, Professor Burkhart, who made this presentation. And then he looked at, the specific cases in terms of what had happened, what they had said in the autopsies. And they looked primarily at this lymphocytic response, lymphocyte predominance, which 
tended to occur in the tissues. Now, as I said before, this is also what happened with regards to animal models when they looked at the SARS-CoV vaccine. And so it's a very, very important question. So you can go through what the thoughts were at that time in 2021. It's very useful to have that direct historical reference to be able to look at carefully what exactly is happening. And so within that framework, Professor Burke had asked the hard questions. And what is very concerning to me, and I have been speaking to a number of people across the world who have been very vocal at trying to do the science and not being afraid to ask questions. What's concerned me is most of them are retired. What does that say? that we don't have enough people who are willing to speak up because of the fear about their jobs. Is that a society that we want to live in? Is that the way where whistleblowers or people who ask questions are then targeted for asking hard questions? Science must always search to find an answer. And we appreciate those who are willing to step forward and make a difference. Professor Burkhardt was one of those. He wasn't afraid to do the science and to ask the questions and to look for answers. He wasn't afraid to challenge the necessary or the thought, the paradigms that were thought of the scientific community. At the end of the day, he was challenging technically with the DNA of any kind of investigation because histological examination of tissue cannot be refuted. Everything else is just an opinion, but they demonstrated a concern, a flag, that there was a response in the tissues that occurred and needed to be investigated. For those who cried against what he has done, if you haven't done the work, then why are you even speaking about it? This is a time for answers. And we appreciate those great leaders and those great scientists who continue to do the work to make a difference for everyone else. Let us remember him and hope that many more like him come forward and make a difference to help the world around them. Have a good day, everyone, as we remember Professor Burkhardt.